Hello everybody, uh, welcome to another weekly reading vlog. It is currently about 20 past 12 on uh, the afternoon of Sunday the 16th of January 2022. I'm currently reading House Carino by uh, Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. I'm enjoying it so far, about a third of the way through. And uh, I'm going to do some editing and stuff today and maybe go and see my friend Sabrina to give her some noodles. We will see. Dane reads. Biggie's having a sit. Aren't you cat? You're having a nice sit. Yeah. The handkerchief. Yo, I just thought you might like to see my tofu yeah. scramble. She said. Delicious. Spring onions, exactly tofu. Put it in the light the so you can see the true colour. Bit of turmeric. The king black onion powder. No, black salt rather. Bit of chilli powder. And, and a Philip Pullman audiobook. Alright, today's cheeky food update. A Thai green curry with, uh, these are like vegan Thai, they're basically like prawn crackers, but with no prawn in. And I made the curry paste myself. And it looks, it looks peng, mate, and hot, very hot. Hello, hello, and guten tag. It is 23.25 p.m. on Friday, the 21st of January. I haven't vlogged for a while. I have been very busy just doing work stuff, basically. Um, keeping as busy as I can with all of that. Um, I've just got deadline after deadline after deadline. It's fucking killing me to be honest So I'm probably gonna be working late tonight and then working all of Saturday Sunday, hopefully um, Sabrina's coming around for, for a vegan roast. I bought these um, Vegan Yorkshire puddings by a company called Mabel's and they just look amazing. They're like this big they just look like proper Yorkshire puddings and um Basically, like, York, Yorkshire puddings are the one thing that there's not really been a decent vegan substitute for. Um, so even these, she makes them all handmade and you have to order them in like a month in advance. I think I, I ordered mine before Christmas at some point. I think like the second week of December. Um, so I'm really excited about trying those because I've tried to make my own, they just don't work as well. Uh, it's like stuff like meat, for example, is very easy to make imitations of. But Yorkshire puddings, like, I think they rely on the egg to rise. So it's just quite difficult to, to make an alternative to them. You can do stuff like toad in the hole, which is basically the same mixture. Um, but it's because it doesn't matter as much if it doesn't rise. Like if she used the same batter she uses to make this toad, to make the Yorkshire puddings, to make a toad in the hole, it'd be like this thick. So, but yeah, I'm excited to have those. I've done most of my housework. Uh, the cleaner was around on Tuesday. I've been whitewashing the walls outside. I need to ring the lady who owns upstairs to ask if I can paint the fences and somehow need to get over hold of the guy who lives, who owns next door, even though the only contact number the guy I bought from has for him is missing two digits. Um, and he's not in the country for six months out of every year. So he owns the fence on the left. I might just paint it. I don't know, we'll see. I also got a toothache, so. Ah, blah, blah, blah. If you see me doing weird stuff in my face, it's because I've got a toothache and I'm not looking forward to trying to get in to see a dentist in the middle of COVID. I've only noticed it today though, so I'm gonna see how it is tomorrow. Mm. Um. So yeah, I mean, I guess I'm making this a two-week vlog. I don't, I can't remember actually. I might have shot an intro on Monday. I feel like I did actually. Um, and I have a bunch of books to update you on as well. So, well, John Steinbeck, East of Eden. I'm listening to the audiobook of that at the moment because my edition of it is just not very nice. So it's not left me wanting to read it. Um, I'm currently on 16 owned but unread books, and one of those is The Scarecrow of Oz, which I'll be reading with Joel Swagman. So this is like a mini one, that won't take me long to read at all. But I can't start reading this until the week after next. I've got some other books coming as well. So I got this Amazon voucher for Christmas. Um, and you have to like scratch scratch it off like a scratch card to see the code. And when I did that, the code came with it. So it's, I've only recently been able to get that fixed. So now I've got some books coming that I've ordered from Amazon with that. Um, but yeah, so I've got a bunch of books that I'd moved onto my bedtime list that I've managed to find audiobooks of. So I listened to the audiobook of Grim Tales by Philip Pullman. I gave this a 3 out of 5. Um, the problem for me is that I don't like fairy tales. In fact, I tweeted about it that the plot of all of the fairy tales and this was basically someone gets told, don't do this or this bad thing will happen. And then they do it and the bad thing happens and then they do the surprise Pikachu face and it's like, mate, you knew that was going to happen. Why are you surprised? So anyway, I gave it like a three out of five. It was it was like reasonably well written. 
I think I was familiar with most of the fairy tales. I just don't really like them. And it's a shame because Philip Pullman's one of my favourite authors. But that's just not the right subject matter for me, you know. And then we have these chunkers here. So I think last time I spoke to you, I was probably reading uh, Alias Grace by Margaret Atwood. Which I gave a 4.5 out of 5 to. It was very good. Um, historical true crime. Um, but with a little bit of fiction thrown in as well. So, um, but yeah, I, I've also recently watched the TV adaptation of it as well. Which I thought was okay, but the book was definitely better. Then I read Prelude to June by, uh, then I read House Carino, part of Prelude to June by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. So this is the third book in a, basically like a prequel trilogy. Um, it wasn't as good as the first two, but then part of that is because you could tell it was just tying things up, you know, by the very nature of it. Um, but it did a satisfactory job of it, you know, I can't complain too much. I gave it like a 3.5 out of 5 and the other two were, were both 4s out of 5. Um, and then I read 48 by James Herbert. So this is actually part of a bind up with Ghosts of Sleeth, which is David Ash book number two or three. I don't know why they did those two in a bind up. It's like midway through a series and then just a random novel. So I read 48 anyway, um, and that's basically an alternative history story where towards the end of the Second World War, Hitler dropped these bombs that were like, had like a biological warfare thing and they gave something called the blood death where you just die either quite quickly or quite slowly but either way it's a horrible way to go unless you have uh, AB blood type in which case you survive um, and my only main problem with this like so the, the actual concept of it is something that I should really have enjoyed but it's the way it started out it just started out with an action scene and it's like but you, you haven't set the story you have no idea who this character is, so it's like hard to care. I'm like, well, I don't care if they catch him. Is this even the main character? I don't know. You've just gone straight into some guy riding a motorbike, you know? So it's very weird. Um, after that, it did pick up a little bit. But yeah, it wasn't as good as I was expecting it to be based on the concept. Let's just put it that way. But I mean, it's still James Herbert and he's still pretty good. So I enjoyed that. Um, the first David Ash book is called Haunted. So I've got... I've got Ghosts of Sleeth and Ash up there, which are books two and three between them. I can't remember which way round. Um, but yeah, the first book, Haunted, is one of the books that's on its way to me, so I can tick these off. Uh, all three of these are going to have reviews, by the way. I'm going to try and show you, but I don't know if my hand's big enough. Yeah, look at that. Three chunkers between them. You can tell that I'm getting towards the end of my unread uh, list. So ne next up, I've picked up um, The Writer's Journey by Christopher Vogler. So this is non-fiction. It's basically him explaining uh, The Hero with a Thousand Faces by, what's his name? Um, you say on the back. Uh, Joseph Campbell, that's the one. Um, which I haven't read, but I do need to read. But I mean, this seems like it's quite accessible. It's very like, there's lots of empty space to this one. I mean, one thing that is kind of annoying me let me see if I can just show you an example. Like, there's spacing between the paragraphs. That's not a great example because those all have... Let's have a look. We need like a block of text. Yeah, here we go. Like this on that left-hand page. Look, there's just a space between each of the paragraphs. I don't know why it's formatted like that, um, but it does just have the effect of me kind of whizzing through this. Uh, I've owned this for over 10 years. I got it while I was at university and just never got around to it. So it's probably my book that I've owned the longest that has remained unread. So it's going to be good to uh, tick this one off. And I think I'll actually get through it quite quickly. So as I say, I'm on 16 owned but unread books at the moment. Um, I've got this on the go. I've got uh, my Alan Bennett bedtime book, which I'm about two thirds of the way through now. I've got East of Eden, which I am an hour and a half into a 26 hour long audio book. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the end is in sight between all three of those, which would take me down to 13, but then I have about four more books coming. So I'm trying to, I'm kind of trying to finish books, tr kind of trying to still finish books faster than new books come in. Um, so on my own read, as I say, I've got those two James Herbert books that I need haunted to be able to get to. Then I've got at Home and A Short History of Nearly Everything by Bill Bryson. Both of those are, are kind of massive. They may become bedtime books that I listen to the audio for. We'll see. I do like Bill Bryson's writing, so if I feel engaged enough to keep going, they will be main books. And then I have The Winds of June by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson, which is pr like June continuation book number 
11 or something and I've read the first three so I need to keep reading Dune <laughs> to get to that book so I can tick it off um, but yeah I mean I'm actually again with this 16 owned but unread books I think my goal is to get to below 10 um, and I think once I get to that stage where I'm at below 10 it's pretty much going to be a case of I'm going to buy a book and then wait for it to arrive and then as soon as that arrives I'll buy my next book and I'll keep doing that because I'll probably still keep getting that list down I mean I don't want to get it down too much because I mean as I say at the moment I've only really got I've got this then those two Bill Bryson books and then I guess I could start this before my buddy read is due to begin but that still only leaves me like four books to read um, and then after that I would have to start moving bedtime books back into my main read which I really don't want to do they're bedtime books for a reason you know so yeah basically I'm, I'm quite happy with having like my next four books lined up or whatever because that gives me a little bit of choice um, so I guess if I do want to get below 10 the only way to do that is to tick off more of the bedtime books you know so ideally I'd have two bedtime books going uh, like the one I'm reading and my next one lined up and then yeah maybe five or six on my own but unread which that would put me on eight and that sounds good to me and then it will get to a much nicer kind of situation in which I'm not buying books and hoarding them for years I'm, I'm buying books and like reading them almost immediately and actually I can go out of my way because I've got this huge list of like I don't know let's have a look how many are on my wish list on Goodreads um, I have this huge list of books I want to get to but basically it means I can just pick out the book that I want to read next and just buy it um, that's taking forever to load 3272 on my want to read and for those keeping track I have 16 on currently reading and 2646 on read so yeah so another goal this year might be to get my read and want to read numbers roughly similar um, I don't know if I hit my goal for the year which is a book every day that's really annoying I'm just crunching the numbers I'm not I'd not quite be there I, that would put me on 2967 read um, it would overtake it but if I only get books that are on my want to read pile, which is unlikely, and I'm also constantly thinking of new people. Like at the moment, I'm listing all of the extended Oz series. I'm adding all of those to my want to read. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty good though, because at that rate, I'm what, 32. So by the time I'm 65, I should have, I should, I should be done. And then there'll be some new books I want to read. I've got a toothache today. So I've made some soup, it is basil and tomato soup with some nice pumpkin and cranberry bread and some croutons and a little bit of balsamic, lovely. Hello people of YouTube, I should turn my light on again. It is 25 to, coming up to 20 to 11 on Saturday the 22nd of uh, January 2022. I still have a little bit of a toothache but I have my secret weapon which is Aura Gel. Um, which is like dental gel it's got benzocaine in it and you rub it on your teeth and it takes the pain away a bit so I have that and some ibuprofen um, which actually has been working quite well it's not been too bad the pain has been particularly bad it was particularly bad when I was sleeping so I didn't sleep too well so I actually might be in bed before too long I'm quite tired we'll see because I'm also sitting here being productive um, what else is new i've listened to a bit more of my audiobook of john steinbeck i'm currently watching when missing turns to murder on netflix um i have been reading the writer's journey by um christopher vogler um which is all right so far it's basically just him kind of paraphrasing um the book by what's his name uh does it say on here see this is what's annoying it doesn't oh it does based on the great work of the great mythologist Joseph Campbell yeah it's basically him just paraphrasing Joseph Campbell's book and he's trying to give real world examples but the thing is this came out in 1996 he's also I don't know if he's ever seen Star Wars he keeps using Star Wars as an example but he said like um, uh, like when uh, Luke Skywalker finds out Darth Vader's his father in Return of the Jedi okay that happens in The Empire Strikes Back 
Uh, Obi-Wan has a laser duel with Darth Vader. No, he doesn't. It's a lightsaber duel. He's got the Death Star is all one word. What else did he have? Hang on, I sent a message to my friend Joe because it was really fucking pissing me off. He's done the um, I Am Your Father thing twice. Oh yeah, he had um, Obi-Wan. Uh, apparently he said to Luke, trust the Force, Luke. He didn't, he said use the Force, Luke. What are you fucking on about? Have you ever seen this film? So, it's kind of annoying me because of that. He also keeps using Wizard of Oz as an example. Um, which is okay, but by, bear in mind by this point, I'm like nine books into Wizard of Oz. So, he's talking about stuff from the movie point of view and it's like well that's different to the book and then even the books different from themselves like it's, it's just sort of not seeing the whole picture of some of his examples basically and it's just annoying because actually if he did then his examples wouldn't work so it's like you're given these examples and you're basically changing popular stories to make them fit your narrative so it's kind of annoying um, but the ideas in it are pretty solid. It's all about, you know, having an inciting incident and the different types of characters. So you've got the mentor, you've got the hero, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's all right. I think I would have got a lot more out of it if I'd read it 10 years ago when I first bought it, when I was a uni student. So like reading it as a novelist now who's, you know, I don't want to toot my own horn, but fairly accomplished. I got like, I think 12 books. Now my new one is going to be number 12. And then there are the three booktube anthologies, so I'm in 15 books anyway. So by that point, it's like I kind of know all this stuff. But yeah, it's all right. I am just continuing reading that. Um, and then I got in the post today, I got The Butlerian Jihad by uh, Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson, which is the next June book. So I might pick that up next. If not, I have At Home by Bill Bryson. Um, I'm also cracking on with my Alan Bennett book. Um, I'm about 200 pages from the end now. I'm on like 440 of 650 or something. Um, so I'm slowly but surely getting through that. I mean, the fucking audiobook for East of Eden, I'm two hours in. I think it's 26 hours long. But I am enjoying it and actually enjoying it a lot more than I think I would have if I just read the book. So that's, that's good. So yeah, that's where we're at. I'm going to try and get a little bit more filming done before midnight unless I go to bed. And then if I'm still awake, I'll do a bit of editing. I have my video ready to edit now, which will be my um, cat DNA result test. So you'll be able to come with me as we see what Biggie's DNA results say about him. So I've got to edit that, but I've got to edit next week's radio show first. So I'm gonna, gonna go do that. Toothache again, so I made uh, more soup. Very nice. Hello, it is 21.35 p.m., so 25 to 10 on Monday the 24th of January. I still have a really bad toothache. It kind of comes and goes. It actually gets a lot worse when I lie down, which is a bit of a problem because it means I can't really sleep. Um, but I have a dentist appointment, an emergency dentist appointment at 3 p.m. tomorrow. So they're probably going to either give me a root canal or pull my tooth out, I think. So that's fun. But at least it'll go away. I'm currently reading uh, The Butler in Jihad by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. Not as good as the um, three books I read earlier. They were like the prequels to June. This goes all the way back to The Butler in Jihad, which is the war against the machines. So there are a lot of like the same families we know and obviously the same world. Um, but it's so far back in time that, you know, all the characters that you know had not been born or whatever. Um, but it's okay. I mean, I would say it's a middle of the road 3.5 out of 5 so far. Um, definitely it li is at least good enough for me to want to keep reading, so there is that. Uh, I went to see Sabrina yesterday. Oh, I'll show you. Um, went to meet her at the pub because um, I had a really bad day yesterday. Uh, and she made me this, which is very sweet because this is, you know, a drawing of my house. So I've ordered a frame to frame that. Oops. And I've just thrown it on the floor. Um, I've just done a COVID test as well. Uh, oh good, I'm negative. Seemed like a good idea to check before I go to the dentist, you know. Even though if I was positive, I don't know what I'd do. Because it's like I can't self-isolate for two weeks with this pain, mate. Taking lots of painkillers. i got my aura gel. Eating liquid foods. 
So that's kind of where I'm at. Um, cracking on it and trying to, do, trying to do a little bit of work. It's all very stressful. Everybody wants everything now. But I'm doing my best, you know. And obviously also I'm in a lot of pain. So I can't really do that much. I'm just doing what I can. And people are going to have to like it or lump it, you know. So tomorrow I imagine will be mostly a write-off because of the dentist and then the ensuing post-dentist pain. Um, and then hopefully I'll feel a little bit better on Thursday because I imagine Wednesday is going to be bad as well. But we will see, won't we, Biggie? Yes, yes we will see. Where is he? There he is. There he is. He's just had his food. He's uh, coughed up some furballs for me to tidy up, so that's going to be a job. Actually, all my housework needs doing because for the last couple of days I've just been feeling like shit, so I haven't... You know, it hurts to walk. Hurts to talk, in fact. But, um, yeah. I'm also working through my edits on the Lightfold files, which is book number three in the Lightfold series, which is due out at the start of June. Um, so I should finish those over the next few days, because there's some very, very light notes. Um, and I've finished watching When Missing, Comes, when Missing Turns to Murder on Netflix, and now I'm watching The Salisbury Poisonings. Um, but I do also need to proof-listen to tomorrow's radio show. Luckily I think that's all edited so I just need to listen back to it. So I'm going to go and do that in a minute even though I'm not really in the mood but you know get it done. I'm going to try and do a little bit of editing and stuff as well but we'll see how we get on with that. So as it's a Monday I think that's a good place to leave you so as always thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments when you last went to the dentist and what work you had done. <laughs> Let me know what you're reading as well. Uh, hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.